Hello, everyone. It's a great pleasure to address the Japanese Society for Biology International Session talking about the American perspective for COVID-19. And today I would like to focus on the fact that there is an anticoagulation controversy in this disease. And I would like to discuss that a bit. First of all, here are my disclosures. Now we know that COVID-19 is a viral induced inflammation triggering a cytokine storm, causing tissue factor release, thrombin generation, fibrin formation, ostensibly to coat the virus and prevent its spread. Unfortunately, the thrombosis occurs as a side effect, and it's more complicated than that. For the first time, for example, we're seeing pulmonary thrombosis. We're seeing arterial events. In fact, we're seeing events occur from thrombosis uh, anywhere where there's an endothelium uh, through any blood vessels. And that, this may produce organ insufficiency. And in some cases with severe uh, fibrinolysis and clot destruction, you have a DIC-like picture. We know that the target for the uh, COVID-19 is the beautiful alveolar interface with the endothelium as seen here. And the COVID-19 enters it, the endothelial cells like spikes facilitated by ACE2 receptors. As a result of that, we have a whole complex series of reactions occurring. And it's akin to what we saw with factor 12 that that Dr. Ratnoff taught us many years ago. And with contact activation, you have activation of platelets, coagulation, fibrinolysis, complement, and the calocrine systems. As a result of that, one sees clinically a variable uh, picture presentation of thrombosis, fibrinolysis, increased vascular permeability, vasodilatation, bradycardia, angioedema, histamine release, hypotension, and, and shock. And as a result of all of these reactions, it's very obvious that this is a very complex disease and we need to have more study by groups of people from various disciplines rather than focusing on just one area or the other area. And to wit, anticoagulation alone is not the answer in this disease. Now let's take a look at some of the big studies that were done. First, the NIH multi-platform study, which showed that in severely ill patients, Therapeutic anticoagulation did not benefit those patients uh, compared to prophylactic anticoagulation, but increased the bleeding rate. On the other hand, in non-seriously ill patients, therapeutic anticoagulation lowered both the incidence of uh, organ support, mortality, and thrombotic events compared to prophylactic anticoagulation. No risk assessment was done individually. Now we see the beautiful action trial that was done uh, by the Brazilian investigators. They show just the opposite. In, in COVID-19 patients with elevated D-dimer, therapeutic anticoagulation with rivaroxaban or anoxaparin did not improve clinical outcomes, but increased the bleeding. So what are we gonna believe? And now here is a third trial of systemic anticoagulation with full dose compared to prophylactic or intermediate dose, just, the, just out the HEP COVID trial, and they were out to show that high-risk COVID-19 patients treated with low molecular weight heparin lead to improved thromboembolic free outcomes and mortality during hospitalization compared to prophylactic anticoagulation. When we take a look at the results, we see that venous thromboembolism events and, all thromb and, and arterial thrombotic events were statistically significantly lower with therapeutic anticoagulation compared to standard. So just the opposite. So we're going back and forth here. And now this trial seemed to show that therapeutic dose was more valuable than prophylactic dose. What's going on here? Is a lack of thorough individual patient risk assessment one explanation for the disagreement regarding the benefits of anticoagulation dosing in COVID-19 patients? I think so. There are low risk patients and high risk patients because of a disease, because of a surgical procedure, but also because of the individual baggage that they may be carrying. The other risk factors, cancer, family history of thrombosis, inflammatory bowel disease, and all the rest. So we advocate taking a look at these COVID patients with scoring. Now here's the Caprini score, which is nothing more than a thorough history and physical, but there's a lot of elements to it. But as the score goes up, the incidence of venous thrombosis goes up. As the number of risk factors goes up, 
And uh, the power of each risk factor uh, also will influence the total score because some risk factors are more powerful than others. So we put them all together, the number of risk factors and the power of the risk factor and come up with a number. And that number represents a nonlinear increase in the clinical VTE rate with increasing score. And here we see the results in general surgery. And you can see how the results go way up. Low risk patients, very low incidence. High risk patients, very high incidence. This has been validated in over 5 million patients. Now, just recently, the improved score, which is a wonderful score that's been validated in medical patients in multiple excellent trials and shown to be effective, it was uh, used along with the Caprini score in COVID-19 patients. And what was found was that in both scores, a linear increase predicted the incidence of VTE and mortality, indicating the value of risk assessment. And here I'm showing the Caprini scores because there's multiple levels. Low risk, low incidence of venous thrombosis, less than 5%. High risk, almost 30%. Now let's take a look at mortality. Very low risk patients, a low mortality, but 80% if the score is over nine. That is very impactful. So what I would like to leave you with is never kill a friend, never treat a stranger. What do we mean by that? Well, when you meet somebody, you have to interrogate them about their risks so that they become like a good friend. And of course, you would never hurt a friend because you'd know about their risk factors and you would protect them. And you would never think of treating a stranger without an individual risk assessment. Ladies and gentlemen, are we treating most COVID-19 patients like strangers without individual risk assessment? It's a critical exercise, especially during COVID-19. I would like to thank you all for your attention. Please visit my social media platforms. Thank you again for this invitation and have a wonderful day.